Hello everyone. This is Ty here just checking in with you uh, to give you an update. So guess what? I was selected for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Initiative. Yes. So yeah, I've been a little quiet because it's been so much to balance admission squad with the Goldman Sachs program, with the master's program that I'm in, with all of my goals and aspirations for 2019. So, but I wanted to take time to come on here, be live and let you all know that I got it. Yes, Valerie, how are you? <laughs> so yeah, I'm a part of the program. Um, the best part is this particular, um, this particular program is in partnership with the Tory Burch Foundation. So guess what? It's all women. It's all women. For me, it's so important to be around women entrepreneurs because we have a different perspective. We have a unique experience. And the types of questions and conversations we're having as we plan out our businesses, it's just different. So I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be, uh, be, to be learning alongside folks who are generating six figures on their way to seven figures, folks who are at seven figures trying to get to eight, nine, ten figures. Um, it's such a great environment. I've even learned, um, we're learning about exits, how to exit your company, how to build with that in mind, how to 10x the value of your company. Um, I mean, just, just so much. I mean, it, it just started. We only had two modules so far. It's about a six-month program. We meet twice a month for like a full Wednesday. Uh, just for anyone else who's out there who's thinking about the program, I strongly recommend it. Hi, Jane. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. It's been phenomenal. Uh, I knew I wanted something. I've been thinking about the MBA for years, but the reason why I did not move forward with the MBA is because a lot of my friends who've gotten an MBA, they don't run companies. Um, and it's, it's totally fine to not run a company. That's fine. But if I am an entrepreneur, I want something that's practical something that I can apply to, you know, a startup company, right? We're still in our first five years of operation. And what I noticed about some of my friends who got their MBA, they were trained to support large scale established institutions, which is great. It's great. But it, it just, I knew it wasn't for me. So, you know, we've kind of just been in prayer about it and waiting to find the right opportunity. And I feel, I really feel that this is it. Even from day one, when I was sitting there in the class, I was like, how often will I have an opportunity to be learning alongside 34 other phenomenal entrepreneurs? I mean, in a variety of industries. We have fashion in there. I'm education. We got marketers. We have hair and beauty. We have real estate. There's like a woman who knows how to build um, high-level real estate projects that wants to reverse gentrification so that we can actually preserve our culture. I mean, it is all kinds of amazing things going on in there. And I just find when women run companies, you know, a lot of the companies, they happen to have a social responsibility element to it. So I think that's pretty cool. So I am just, yes, Ramel, yes, thank you so much. You know, hopefully that email that I sent out worked. <laughs> but thank you so much for like, you know, being my support in that process. But yes, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, and I'm going twice a month. I'm getting all the knowledge. Um, I'm networking. We have our accountability group in place so we can maximize the opportunity. Um, and I hope that you guys are going to see Admission Squad to literally multiply itself in the next six months to a year. So we kind of already had some support earlier this year to develop our five-year plan, our key partnership strategy, our fundraising proposals. So now with Goldman on top, the, the 10,000, you know, all that training, man, we're about to do some big things. Like, that's all I'm saying. That's how, that's how I feel. And then, you know, you have a team of support around you. And I think that's what makes a huge difference. So again, anyone out there who's even thinking about doing it two years ago when I saw the program, uh, I said, they're not going to choose us or we're not ready or we just didn't have enough. All these reasons why, you know, I would come up with excuses or just count myself out. And I finally, like, as of this year, I was just like, look, Ty, just apply. Like, you never know what's going to happen. Shout out to Warisi. She actually does my sister locks with Sumptuous Locks. And um, she was a part of the program and she was like, Ty, just apply. Just just do it. You don't know what's going to happen. It, it's only going to be helpful. So I was like, I don't know. So I applied this year and, you know, 
I got in. So for anyone out there who is doubting themselves and for whatever reason is counting themselves out of this opportunity, please don't do that. Just go out there with whatever you got. You know, ideally, I mean, the only big thing is you have to have an established company. This is not for folks who are in the idea phase and who haven't generated actual revenue yet. This is for companies who have generated, I think for the Tory Burch side, you need at least 25,000 in revenue. You have to demonstrate, you know, it's, it's more of an evolved vision. Um, and you know, you've taken action against your, your plan. So you have demonstrated revenue. You don't necessarily have to have a, a large scale team. Ideally, you know, if, if it's yourself and maybe one other person is a pretty good, uh, is this a pretty good thing for you to apply with? Um, they, they're not looking for established companies, but they're looking for you to have made a couple steps um, in the process. So just keep that in mind. It's not just New York based. Um, it's in other places as well. So if it's in your local city, I know they have, um, you know, a program running in DC, California. I mean, it's all over. So just keep a lookout for that. If you have a, a company that you've been working on and you just feel like you need that extra edge of business education that is designed for companies within their first five years of growth, this is the program that you want to do. Okay. Yes, Valerie. It's been, I mean, it's only been two modules that I've went to and it's already been phenomenal. So I just, I can't imagine, um, by the end of six months, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a totally different person. Like one of the first pieces of advice was get an assistant, you know? So guess what? I hired an assistant. Like I was like, we cannot afford to like not have an assistant. If I can duplicate myself, I can do more. So they're just unlocking a lot of, um, these limiting belief systems that we have and helping us to figure out, you know, how can we operate on a higher level? to 10X our companies, you know? And some people don't want that much growth, but if you do, if you know you want a $10 million company, a $50 million company, you have to learn some things in order to be able to operate a company at that level. So I'm clear, I'm all the way clear, I'm coachable, I am showing up, I'm all the way ready to go, I'm taking lots of notes, and most importantly, I'm implementing everything that I'm learning. As soon as I learn, I implement. I learn, I implement, so I love that you learn and then there's like, you know, a week or two in between classes so that you can actually implement what you're learning. So you're not kind of wasting time. Of course, we work on pitching. We work on, um, you know, how you get your team to buy into your growth goals and all that good stuff. So, you know, we're, we're really excited. We're really excited. Yes, scale or fail. <laughs> yes, Valerie, you cannot build a company without scalability in mind. So, you know, we're going to be talking about systems and one of the the, the best books I know for that is Traction. That's what um, Dr. Boyce Watkins had recommended um, for, to help you put systems in place to actually grow your company. So that that's important. So we're going to be covering that like later on, maybe module six or seven. Um, we're going to be talking about systems. But so far, to me, the most valuable thing I've learned, if, if anyone were to ask me that question, is just they made us establish the difference between you and your business. They said, <clears throat> a lot of times we make plans and goals and we only think about the business and we don't separate ourselves from that. And yes, in the beginning, a lot of who the business is is basically who you are, but you have to make sure that the business is designed in a way where it's allowing you to accomplish the goals that you had for yourself. And I was like, can somebody say that twice, please? <laughs> like, so now that we are all the way clear that I am separate from admission squad, I am separate from whatever company I'm currently working on. And I had goals before I even started this thing. How am I making sure that how I'm growing admission squad is holding me accountable to my personal goals. And if I'm not doing that, then I have to make adjustments period. So that, that was like, it's eye opening. It's not revolutionary, but it's the reality that a lot of us were not really prioritizing ourselves and ensuring that what our personal five year plan is it fits into the vision of the company. So that is um, that's definitely that's definitely critical. So that has been like, okay, Ty, if you know that you're trying to have that chef and nutritionist and your you know, your personal staff of support, hair, makeup artist, a beautiful home, all that stuff, how much revenue do I need to be bringing in to accommodate the lifestyle that I want to have? Or if I know that I want to be able to start a school or do something at a much higher level, what how do I need to be positioning at Mission Squad to accommodate that? So it's just, just different questions that, you know, they are definitely forcing me to ask about 
how I'm moving, the decisions that I'm making, and if it fits in line with what it is that I really want to do. So yeah, here we are. Look, I'm going to keep you guys posted because I love keeping everyone with me on the journey um, to show you entrepreneurship is not easy. It's doable. And there are resources out there uh, that you can leverage if you should so choose to do so. Okay. So I am signing off. Um, yeah. Hi, Tavon. How are you? Makes sense, but I haven't heard it framed so clearly and logically. Yes, exactly. No, seriously. Like we just prioritize the business. We say, well, what are your aspirations? And a lot of times we default to what the business needs. And then we forget, no, but we had personal goals. Like when we went into this, we wanted to be successful for A, B, C, D, E. You know what I mean? Like there were clear reasons. How do we get lost? And all the things that the business, like I definitely have, have spent all of my resources on a mission squad, like literally. So it's really important that, okay, we're in our third year. We found it in 2016. We're in 2018 now. We got two more years before I feel like, you know, we're pretty, a pretty mature company, how, how am I doing on my personal goals? You know what I mean? So that, those are some serious questions, you know, so we had to write down the aspirations for ourselves, for the company, and we have to hold ourselves accountable to ensuring that as we develop the growth plan, which is very different from a business plan, that we are incorporating those revenue trajectory, um, trajections, uh, projections and, um, you know, the team size that we need, the importance of delegation to meet the needs of what we personally require. Yeah. So exactly, exactly. And this, again, it's, it's very basic, but so many of us don't do that. So once you really get to like, let's say I, I know I want to make 500,000 a year as a salary from my business and even in five years or three years. Okay. Well, that means like, I cannot have a company only making a, a million and I'm, I'm taking 500,000, right? So that means like the company needs to be bringing in maybe about 5 million. Okay, cool. So if I know that we have to be bringing in 5 million in five years, what types of, of business plan or like a growth plan would that require? You know, so it may not be a B2C company. Like I may not be providing a product directly to customer Maybe I'm going to institutions and organizations that's B2B. Maybe I am doing a franchise model where I'm like, okay, I want to empower five people to duplicate my company because I know each one of those branches can bring in a million. It's just real different. Like how you spending your time changes, <laughs> you know, the types of conversations you're having changes. So yeah, so I just, I wanted to just share that with you all um, and just, you know, a few words of inspiration Things are happening. God is moving. I'm really excited and I'm going to keep you all informed. Okay. Uh, so be well. I look forward to speaking with you all soon. Okay. Talk to you soon, everyone. Bye-bye.